Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, we are going to be discussing two build your understanding problems from the chapter of fluid mechanics. So let's start our discussion of problem two. So we have a sphere of radius r that floats almost fully submerged in a liquid as shown in the figure. We have to find the force exerted by the liquid on the lower half of the sphere. Anyway, so we have to exclude the force that the fluid applies on the upper half. Okay. And we have to exclude the contribution of the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Guys, so the first key thing to note here is that the sphere is fully submerged, which essentially would mean that the density of the sphere would equal the density of the fluid. Okay. So now as the densities of the two bodies are equal, we can consider the sphere plus the fluid above it as one single body. So what is the benefit of doing that? So if you consider the force that the fluid will now exert on this new system, it'll be something like this. And similarly, this is the force that acts on this side. And these two cancel each other out due to symmetry. We can just completely ignore that. And if you look at the force that is applied on the lower hemisphere, it'll be something like this, right? Normal to the surface at each point. And if you consider the resultant of these forces as well, it would again be in the upward direction. The horizontal ones will cancel each other out. Let's name the upward resultant force as F. Now F is simply going to be the Boyne force that acts on the fluid plus the hemisphere system. So all we have to do now is determine the volume. Now the volume of this much part is going to be two half of a sphere that is two by three pi r cube. And the upper part, so the height over here is going to be R and the radius is also r. So this is simply going to be a cylinder of radius r and height r and the volume of that is pi r cube. The submerged volume comes out to be five by three pi r cube. So the Boyne force or F, which is the answer in this case is the submerged volume times the density of the fluid times g. Okay, so what is the alternative way? So if you want to consider this sphere as one single entity, then you have to consider the force applied by the liquid above the sphere, right? Let's say you consider that as some f1 and the force due to the bottom fluid as f2. Now you can write f2 minus f1 as the Boyne force acting on the sphere. And now you have to draw another FBD for this fluid over here, this fluid element over here. All this can be avoided if you consider this total thing as the FBD. So that was it for this problem. Now let's move on to problem three. Okay guys, so moving on to the next problem. So we have a vessel filled with some water and it has a hemispherical dent over here. And the highest point is said to be at a depth of H from the free surface and the radius of the hemispherical part is R. So we have to find the magnitude of force of liquid pressure on the dent, excluding the contribution of atmospheric pressure. So the fluid will be applying some force on this uh, hemispherical dent over here. We have to find the magnitude of that force. Okay, so before we discuss this problem, we have to discuss a small result. And that is a hydrostatic force that acts on a submerged surface. And remember guys, this is a surface over here. This is not a volume of an object. So this is a planar surface and we are talking about the force that is applied by the fluid. So, uh, and we are discussing about the net force that the, that acts on this surface due to fluid pressure. And this planar surface, when viewed from the top, it will look something like this. Now let's mark the centroid of this planar surface as G. And in our side view, let's say, the centroid is over here and its height from the free surface is let's say hc now guys the result is that if i want to write the net force acting on this surface its magnitude is simply going to be the pressure at the centroid multiplied by the area of the surface okay and i'm not going to prove it in this video because it's going to get long but if you guys want a proof video, I'll, I'll make a separate video covering the proof. So in this particular case, if I want to write the force, let's say F is the net force acting on the surface, P0 plus rho G H C times the area of the surface. So we are going to be using this result in our problem. And also guys, the point of application of this force is not at the centroid. It will be a little below the centroid. And that's because the water pressure is not uniform, right? It is actually increasing as we go down, which means the point of application is going to be slightly below the centroid. Like if we have to discuss it, it'll take us another like 30 minutes to discuss the stuff and that the exact point of application is found out by using the torque analysis so i'm not going to cover that in this video can i'll make another video if you guys want it yeah now let's uh, start discussing our current problem okay guys so one way of solving this problem is by analyzing the pressure at each point of this hemispherical surface and we know the direction of the force is going to be passing through the center of the hemisphere so finding the pressure as some function of you know theta or something and we have to integrate integral pda and also keeping in mind the sign. The pressure is going to get complicated here. So that's going to be very complicated. What we can do instead is assume that 
this dent did not exist and there was fluid present here as well okay and why are we doing this the presence or absence of fluid at this part will make no difference at the force that the fluid exerts on the hemisphere if you guys think about it because the pressure that acts on this hemispherical surface is only dependent on the height from the free surface right so the benefit of assuming fluid to exist over here is that we can draw its fbd and directly calculate the force acting on the hemispherical surface with the help of the fluid fbd so that is what we are going to be doing so guys so in this fluid fbd over here what are the forces that are going to act well the first is the weight of the fluid and let's call it as w and the next force is you could say the normal reaction from the floor of the vessel okay and let's call it as n and what is remaining the force that the surrounding fluid applies on this fluid element okay guys so the that we don't really know exactly at which point is the force gonna act but it's it's not important so th this is a rough fbd uh, of the fluid element now guys let's try to determine each of these terms so w is very easy it is equal to the volume of the hemisphere that will be 2 by 3 pi r cube times the density of water density of the fluid multiplied by g so w is done for determining n we can use the result that that we discussed and n is the resultant force that the fluid applies on this circular surface over here right according to our result it was simply the pressure at the centroid multiplied by the area of the surface so the centroid of this circle you know this base circle is simply the ce center of curvature of this hemisphere and let's call that point as c and c is at a distance of r plus h from the free surface so if you want to write n in one step it is simply going to be the pressure at c multiplied by the area of cross section the pressure at c is again going to be rho g times h plus r area of cross section is going to be pi r squared now uh, as we know that this is an equilibrium we can write sigma fx equals zero the base of the vessel makes an angle theta with the horizontal means the normal makes an angle theta with the vertical so with this we can write fx n sine theta and fy equals n cos theta minus w okay so and after solving these two equations you will obtain fx and fy as these particular values and in order to obtain the magnitude all you have to do is square root of fx squared plus fy squared so that was it for this problem guys uh, if you want the video proof of these results then you can comment down below uh, i'll make another video and yeah that's about it thanks for watching guys